Hello guys, it's me, Nikki. Hello. Yep, I hear you thinking it. Oh my God, girl, you looking rough. I agree with you. Girls got eye bags for days. Yep, I do. It is Pride Week in Amsterdam. And yesterday I actually had the honor of being on a boat during the Cannel Parade. And that is like the hugest thing here in Amsterdam when it comes to Pride. And just, it was my first year actually going to Pride and my first year being on a boat. Anyways, today I am here to bring you a brand new video that I'm actually really so excited about because as you know I love games I did make a bingo inspired by Alyssa Ashley and now I feel like we need another game on the channel so after I addressed some things that happened between Too Faced and myself in the past when we collaborated I felt like a lot of people were so happy that I finally opened up about something so private it just brought us I feel like even closer we already are really close like sometimes I feel like you could be in the <laughs> I feel like the bond that we have is so strong so in today's video we are renovating the game Truth or Dare. Here's how it goes. On social media, I asked you guys to ask me a question that you think I would never, ever want to answer in my life. Let's just say after the results came in, a lot of you guys had a lot to ask me. <laughs> On the website, you could also thumbs up a question or thumbs down a question. And what that did was it kind of got the popularity vote started. So the most thumbed up question rose to the top and the ones that people didn't like fell to the bottom. In the end, that gave me a top 15 very spicy questions. 15 questions that I probably don't want to answer. But today, I might. In this Makeup Truth or Dare, I kind of broke down my makeup routine to 15 steps. All steps stand for a question. The first question will be primer. Second question will be foundation. I also gathered 15 products that I absolutely do not like or just they absolutely do not work for my face. I'm talking products that room my look here. And you guessed it, when I get a question that I absolutely do not want to answer, I have to use that shitty product. Get it? It's kind of like James Corden, Spare Your Guts. I think that was a good explanation. Okay, so without any further ado, let this makeup truth or dare commence. <laughs> okay, time for question number one. And this will determine if I get to use my favorite primer or a primer that does nothing for me. This one by Origins, and this is called the Pore Perfecting Cooling Primer with Willow Herbs. Shake well, dispense onto fingertips, smooth on after moisturizer and before makeup. Warning, flammable. <laughs> Great. The scent on this will make you lose at least four brain cells. I don't see any improvements in my skin. It doesn't do anything for longevity. This is, I believe, the most useless primer on the market. This uh, didn't come in as a surprise. Why are you not friends with Jeffree Star anymore? Guess the primer it is. <laughs> no, um, I think I do have to use the primer, but I do want to answer it partly. I think Jeffree and I are cool. When it comes to me on my part, so much has happened in my life this past year. Like, like I said with uh, Too Faced, it just puts so much in perspective. On my part, I have no bad feelings towards Jeffree. Do we call each other friends? Don't think so, because we haven't texted him forever and I haven't spoken to him in forever. We said hi to each other through James, but that's about it. On my part, honestly, I'm okay. Eventually, what ended our close friendship is that we had to work on communication and I feel like I have grown as a person. I can tell Jeffrey has grown as a person. Honestly, I don't know if that answers the question, but that is sort of how it feels like on my side. So yeah, I feel like that partially answers the question, but also not. So do I cover one half of my face with this and the other half in a good primer? I don't know. I am gonna prime with this because I feel like I owe you a bad priming situation right now. Okay, so it says to shake well. <laughs> oh, it smells like nature is drunk on vodka. And it leaves my face feeling like no change at all. Goodbye. <laughs> this sucks. Okay, time for my next step, foundation. And if I don't wanna answer the question, the foundation that I have to dip into is this one by Maybelline, the Dream Matte Mousse. I use this so much as a teenager because 
everybody was using it and I thought that was what I had to use since everybody was using it. Now before I piss anyone off with the products I'm mentioning today, these are just products that do not work for me. If they work for you, congratulations. I'm so happy for you because I wish they worked for me. They're not. The Dream Matte Mousse is simply too matte for me and it just doesn't look good on my skin. It brings out dry patches in my face. So let's see if I'm gonna have to dip into it. Who is the meanest celebrity you've ever met? Honestly, I don't think I've ever met a mean, let me, okay, I'm really digging here now. I think it's a good thing that I actually have to dig to see if I've had a, a, like a not so pleasant interaction with a celebrity. I don't think I've met a mean celebrity. I can't answer it, so, so that means I have to dip in. <laughs> okay. Oh boy. <laughs> There's no difference. There's no difference. It's bringing out all the dry patches of my face. Oh my God, I need to scrub. Oh my God, do you see that? Time for question number three, which will determine if I can dip into my favorite concealer or dip in to this. This is by MUA. This is one of those little camouflage sets that um, nobody really needs in their life. It doesn't look pretty on the skin. When you pick up the product, it feels very, very creamy and wet, like almost like there's too much oil in it. But then as soon as you apply it to the face, it kind of sets in this super weird matte finish. It's sort of like an oily matte. Are you and Rick still dating? <gasps> I actually announced this a couple of months ago on social media and Rick and I broke up, but Rick and I are still such good friends. I love him as a person. I love him as a friend. It's like there's no harsh feelings between us. Throughout the years, our sort of love flame kind of simmered down a little. Together, we decided that we would rather break up with each other and still remain good friends than be with each other and hate each other. And it honestly has been so good and I'm really happy about that. And I'm also really happy because now I get to use a concealer that's hopefully gonna save this. Oh yes, honey, come here. Let's find out if I can dip into my favorite powder to set or dip into the RCMA original setting powder. It just sadly is not the powder for my skin and my skin already is not looking all too great. So please let it be an easy question. What is the craziest thing I've ever bought with my money I earned through YouTube? Um, The craziest thing I ever bought with my money through YouTube has been a Ferrari. I am a huge car lover. I love cars so much. I love it when they're fast. I love it when they're sporty. A Ferrari that I had for a beautiful three months and then um, sold again because I wanted to buy a house. And when I look at values, I think a house house is way more important than a car. And honestly, I haven't regretted it for a second. And that is the craziest thing I've ever bought with my money. Um, so now I get to dip into my favorite powder. Oh, Maybelline Fit Me, come over here real quick. My face hasn't looked this disastrous for a long time. Look at that, because of the primer and the foundation, products are just slipping off my face, it's slipping off my nose. Look at the chin, crusty, smeared off mess. <sighs> if I don't want to answer the following question, I have to dip into this right here. Now this isn't necessarily a bad product. This is the Ardell Stroke A Brow Feathering Brow Pen. I bought this in the color taupe and it looks black. What makeup trend do you wish would disappear? And what makeup trend would you want to bring back? I think makeup in and of itself is such an art form and I feel like it doesn't matter what trend it is or whatever people People look like I feel like the fact that we can celebrate makeup and um, support makeup is so much better than hating on trends. I do think we had that phase of like having weird brows, like we had braided brows, wavy brows, we had all these types of brows, and all I would end up seeing was photoshopped wavy brows, photoshopped braided brows, which I have nothing against. 
you're on my channel. You know I have nothing against that. But when we do have a makeup trend, let it actually be makeup and not something digital. And a makeup trend I wanna bring back, I feel like concentrated blush can be so pretty and so fun in a look. And I feel like a lot of people are scared of blush. I feel like blush should make a comeback. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm thinking. Everything that I'm touching or moving on my face kind of just doesn't want to grab on. Like it's almost as if the primer and the foundation are like total chaos on my face together. Okay, the next truth or dare will determine if I am allowed to use an eye primer. I was looking for a bad eye primer, but I don't want the negativity in my life. So I don't have that in my life. So it's either gonna be I get to use my favorite primer or no primer. Have you ever lied about the quality of a product because you were paid? Oh, oh. Uh -huh. I have never in my life lied when I got sponsored to use a product. There's one sponsorship I regret sincerely. It was for one of those like teas out there. And I kind of did it because I saw so many influencers and so many celebrities promoting them that I thought it was a good thing. But then I posted it and some people explained to me why it necessarily isn't the best. So I regret doing that. Never lied, never made it look better, never tried harder. I only do sponsorships when I believe in them. I don't think I have to explain what I'm using for my eye base, but I will. It is the P. Louise base. Okay, time for eyeshadow. And if I don't want to answer the following question, I will have to dip into some palettes that don't necessarily make my heart beat faster. Well, they might make my heart beat faster in fear. The first palette is this. This is by Makeup Revolution. It is the Redemption Palette's Essential Shimmers. Ain't nobody getting any redemption with this, but if I'm in the mood for some color, I can go for this. The MUA Makeup Academy Silent Disco Eyeshadow Palette. You should apply this in silence and stay in a dark silent room when you apply this. I find the shadows to be powdery. There's not a lot of pigment happening. The colors seem a little bit meh. Spill the tea on your love life. Oh God. Uh... I made a very clear rule for myself to protect my privacy and my sanity. I made the clear rule for myself to just not speak about it, not let anyone know about it. And then if a relationship ends up not working, I don't have to explain to millions of followers why it wasn't working. I might be ashamed of myself when things don't work out. So I cannot answer that question. <laughs> Meaning we're gonna be shimmering in a silent disco. I wanna dip into this super bright, fiery orange. And I'm dipping this onto that out. What? Just dimming it onto the lid. And then as soon as I reach the crease, I'm gonna be buffing and blending it out. Now dipping into the yellow to kind of buff and blend that out a little bit more. Hmm. I love a super pigmented yellow that decides to show up on my eyeballs. Okay, I just want you to know that I am putting maximum effort into making this work. I can't guarantee that it's gonna look visually appealing at the end, but I just want you to know that I'm trying, okay? From the Makeup Revolution palette, I'm gonna grab this shimmery champagne -y white shade. And I'm just gonna apply this to the inner corner to kind of distract. I do wanna mention that with the P. Louise base, these are performing a whole lot better than when I first played with them and I still use my MAC Paint Pot. It's still not the best out there, but it's better than when I first played with them. So now I'm just gonna try and make this look presentable. Okay, picking up that orange again and putting it on the outer corner of the lower lash line. Oh my God, there is so much fallout with these shades. If I don't wanna answer the next truth or dare question, I have to go in with this. The L'Oreal False Lash Telescopic Infinite False Lash Length. Lies, 
lies, and lies. What's the shady stuff Too Faced did to you? Well, I kind of already addressed that in a previous video. There have been some things that Too Faced pulled behind my back, quality-wise when it comes to the collaboration that I did not stand for and that I did not believe in. And it actually was really destructive to my name and what I stand for because a lot of people started um, not trusting me anymore because, you know, my own collaboration wasn't as good of a quality, and that is as much as I can tell you. So, I am dipping into my favorite mascara. <laughs> Natural lashes on me are a very uncommon thing. So these are the most natural ones I could find. The 110s by Ardell. How many cosmetic surgeries have you had? In all honesty, it kind of depends what you think a surgery is. When you think filler is a surgery, a lot. When you think Botox is a surgery, a lot. <laughs> you guys out there know my face like no other. Like if one brow arches a little bit more than the other, you guys will be the first to let me know. So I feel like whatever I do to my face, whatever I do, you will notice. So why hide it? Why lie about it? Do I recommend it to everybody? No, it just made me a happier person. It made me more confident. Do you need fillers and Botox to be more confident? No, which means goodbye. Hello, good lashes. Okay, the next step is bronzer. <sighs> this one pains me. I always thought I loved this bronzer and I always thought it made me look amazing. But now looking back, now that I know more about bronzers and what bronzers fit my skin tone, I have been so wrong all this time. This right here is a limited edition MAC bronzer in the color Refined Golden. Refined Golden is in the permanent line. Bronzer 101, you don't want anything shimmery or glittery in your bronzer. It, it won't end well. I didn't know that at the time. It's also way too warm and dark for my fair skin tone. And because of this, because this made my forehead look so muddy and dirty, I stopped bronzing my forehead all together for years. Are you and Kim still friends? And this person is asking about Kim Tai. Kim and I are friends. We just don't document everything on social media. I haven't been to the States in a long time, but last time I was in LA, I saw Kim. We just didn't snap about it. Our friendship is fine. I think we're both just so busy and I can use the bronzer that I like. You know it, Jouer. My base is horrible. Oh my God. With every push on the skin, I feel like I'm pushing away the primer and the foundation because there is no grip. I'm noticing that everything is going to shit. <laughs> okay, now time for contouring. Now, again, I think it's so fascinating how our preferences and our techniques and how our look sort of changes throughout time. If you've been following me for a little bit, I'm talking way, way back, you guys know this one. I thought this made me look snatched, but not until a couple years later, I found out that this has a pretty pinkish sort of undertone and that, doesn't look all that great. Which other makeup guru do you least like? <laughs> nah, I guess I'm using it again after all these years. You can't possibly think that I would ever, ever answer that. I mean, I have someone, but no. I think this has been in my drawer for like three, four years. I don't know if anything will come off. So I'm just starting to buff this in. <sighs> So patchy, so uneven. It's also because of the base. Ugh. Okay, time for blush. Now, I would love to show you a blush that I hate, but like I said earlier in this video, I would love for blush to make a comeback, and I take my blush game very seriously, and I simply don't own bad blushes because of that. I noticed you distanced yourself from other beauty gurus. Was this for your own personal sanity? Oh my God, that's a deep question. I did notice that the period where I really went to like a lot of the events, it does a lot to you. Like you start doubting your self-confidence. Like these people look like freaking perfection in real life. They cut the perfect body, Everything is so perfect that to me, sometimes it made me very, very insecure because I'm that tall girl, you know, not the pretties. Like I'm not standard, like I'm not the standard for pretty. Not saying that I felt like that every event, but there's been events where I felt like the ugly duckling or like the awkward one or like the awkward giant. If you ask it like that, 
Yes, I distance myself a little bit. I don't go to all the events anymore. Okay, time for a highlighter. If I don't answer the question, <sighs> this, MUA Lux. Apparently they have a Lux line. Glow Beam Liquid Highlight Cushion. Pressing my finger in violently. There's nothing. There is nothing. I am now rubbing the cushion. There is absolutely nothing. Do you have any weird obsessions? Earlobes and ears in and of itself, I find very fascinating. I'm not obsessed with them. It's not like I look up ears at night to get myself going. <laughs> it's definitely not like that, but I, I I like looking at earlobes and what other people's earlobes look like. That is pretty weird. Kind of obsessing over Tom Holland every day. Is that weird? I don't think that's weird. That's completely normal. Uh, that's about it, I guess. Is that weird? Earlobes and Tom Holland. I don't know, you let me know in the comments down below if you think that's weird or not, but I can use highlighter. <laughs> Oh, I am using the new Natasha Denona Super Glow in the color one fair and oh, You can call this a super glow Natasha Denona. Okay time for a nice lip truth or dare If I don't want to answer the following question this awaits me. This is my long comb. This is called the L'absolu lacor. This is a lip lacquer, which is the bougie word for a lip gloss. And this is one of those colors that just never work on me. It's like a dusty, dark, mauvey, brownie mess. Unless you are of a deeper complexion, this could be a beautiful nude on you. On me with my pasty ass, it looks, it just makes me, it just ages me a lot. It makes me look a lot older. Like I'm not getting all that filler and Botox to look older. When did you lose your virginity? Ah! <laughs> ah, like my mom would say, some things in life should remain private. And I'm having the strong feeling that this shouldn't, should be private. Mm. Oh, I regret it already. Like. Why does it get so sheer there? Like, what is this? Oh my God, I should have just set the damn age. Okay, our 15th and final question slash final makeup step has come upon me. I don't know how people like the Fix Plus Mister. This is a MAC Fix Plus. The spritz on this is so abusive. Whenever I see people obsess over Fix Plus, I'm like, but how do you use it? YouTube crush. I don't have a YouTube crush. Does it count when I say Shawn Mendes because he started on YouTube? Oh, you're probably gonna think that doesn't count, huh? Okay, I'm using it. Stop being so aggressive on my face, oh my God. I look like I just ran a marathon and came out losing because I didn't make it in time. And there we have it guys, a face full of interesting makeup choices after some very spicy truth or dare questions. When I look back in the end, I am honestly super surprised at the eyeshadow palettes, but again, I do want to say that P. Louise really helped him out. The base is a mess, we've talked about this. This was so interesting. Interesting. It was so cool going back to a couple of products that worked before and now don't really work anymore. And it felt very um, liberating to spill some tea and also keep some of the tea inside of the pot to never get out. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I had so much fun with this video and I think we can do this a lot more in the future. If you enjoyed watching this video and if you enjoyed getting to know me a little bit more or getting to know about a couple of products that didn't necessarily work for me, then absolutely please in the comment section down below, let me know if you want to see this more often Often or give this video a big thumbs up so I know that I should do it more. But yeah, that concludes this very eventful video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, then please go ahead and do so. Thank you so much for watching. I love you so, so much. And I will see you guys very soon in a brand, brand new video. I love you, bye.